Well, let everything that has breath praise the living God. I want to congratulate you for connecting day five, the life-changing Morris Cirillo New Anointing School of Ministry. Don Mandel is back from the ends of the earth. Mark Masson is in the house today. Don, today, Brother Cirillo is going to take us in behind the scenes, the experience that changed his prayer life forever. And of course, I take great note of God trusting him with this message because look how it was birthed. I mean, with all due respect, so many preachers would have taken it, written it down, put some scriptures, created a DVD set, created a book, right. and put slogans in the mouths of everyone. He spent six years getting focused on what God was really saying, and then took it into the arena of conflict, which at that time, the large crusade was virtually impossible to hold in India mm -hmm. until he confronted it with the new anointing. Yes, and you see, we have seen at the last session, the anointing of healing, yeah. which we all want to exercise. But today we're gonna receive the key to receive that anointing of healing. And this is an amazing course today. Yes, and you know, Mark and Don, what I love today, what Brother Thrillo is really gonna be saying to us is your problem is not your problem. And he's gonna show us how we can go beyond the surface and get into our love he calls the spiritual underworld. So if you are ready to go past the point of blessing today, if you're ready to go in to the root, if you're ready to go into the spiritual underworld, not in your name, not in Morris Cirillo's name, but my God, in the name that is above every name. Lord Jesus, we ask that you be magnified today. Every word that is spoken, oh God, that you would brand it into the spiritual lives of your men and women. Lord, that we would be a new breed, O oh God, a new generation, Lord, that would cause the powers of the enemy to be broken over cities, over nations, over our families, in the mighty name of Jesus. If you're ready for that, I want you to say amen as we welcome once again God's apostle, prophet to the nations. Would you join me in thanking God for his servant, Dr. Morris Cirillo. One of the greatest keys to harvest is spiritual timing. I waited for six years after God spoke to me that a new anointing was coming. I waited for six years before I even began to scratch the surface to understand what God meant when he said a new anointing was coming. His divine healing power was coming to North America. Now, most people probably when they heard that from the Father would have canceled all their overseas meetings and would have just jumped back into crusades and meetings in the United States. I did not. I waited for six long years. And then the revelation came to me of this new anointing in the strangest of all places. There was one country in all of my travels, as I would go across the nations of the world, there was one country that I always prayed. I said, God, don't ever send me to this country. I used to fly into this nation as we would go around the world. And my plane would sometimes be stuck in this country for a day. I couldn't get a plane out. I'd be there 24 hours. And I was always spiritually sick. Now, I believe I understand a little bit of what demon power is. 
I'm not talking about some of the things that we call demon power here in North America. Some of you are, like I told you the other night, your toothaches. I've walked into nations and walked into insane asylums where people behind bars who didn't even speak English language would call out my name, Marcelo! Didn't know a word of English. But when we walked down the corridor, the demons recognized who we were. The inevitable happened. And the Spirit of God directed me to go. I had, I can't tell you how many, but it was hundreds of invitations down through the years to go to this nation for meetings. And I'd put them on the side. I wouldn't want them. We went. And I will never forget as I came off of the airplane. You say, Brother Shula, what nation was it? It was the nation of India. When I stepped off of the airplane and I looked into the face of my son, who was a big, strong, strapping man, he looked sick. His face was white and peaked. And I thought to myself, did he eat some food that he shouldn't have eaten? Or did he drink some water that he shouldn't have? How many of you know, you go to these different nations of the world and all kinds of climate and food and water changes. And it affects the metabolism of the body. And when we got to where the baggage was coming, I slipped my arm around David and I said, David, I said, are you sick? I said, did you eat something you shouldn't have eaten? Or did you drink something that you shouldn't have? have? I said, uh, uh, you look terrible. And he said to me, no, Dad. And I will never forget the look on his face. It's with me to this day Tears welling up in his eyes because he is a very compassionate man. And he looked at me and he said to me as if to say, Dad, please help me. He said, I can't tell you what it is. He said, I'm not sick physically. But he said, Dad, there's something here in the air. I've been with you all over. But he said, there's something here. He said, I can't tell you what it is, but he says, I feel sick. I said to him, don't worry about it. I said, I know what it is. Take me to my room. They took me to my hotel. And I arrived the day before the meeting was to start. And I locked the door and I went into prayer and fasting. I did not eat any food. And in that experience of praying in that room, I entered into a new dimension prayer that I had never experienced before. It's always my custom down through the years, my men will all tell you that at a certain time in the day before I step out on the platform, I don't see anybody, I don't talk to anybody, and I don't eat anything. I never walk into a meeting having having eaten a meal or any kind of food ever. And I spend most of that time 
a segment of several hours before God, before I step out to minister the healing power. But this was different. I felt my spirit because this not only went on for hours but on throughout the night and all throughout the next day. No sleep but travail. And I felt my body, my spirit leave my physical body. Now, man lives in two worlds. He lives in a natural world and he lives in a spiritual world. And I felt my spirit leave my body as if it left it here on in one place of the room and, and my spirit was transported into a, a marina. And there my spirit, not my body, began to engage in a battle. I found myself calling out the names of things that were foreign to me that I did not understand but were actually the works of the enemy that were controlling the circumstances of that nation. For example, I did not know and my men are under strict orders not to tell me anything that may be coming against me. I didn't know it. But in India, the Hindu priests had already organized to kill me first night. And they had a plan that when my people said a certain thing, they had their priests scattered all over the crowd that they were going to start to stir up the Hindus and riot them and bring them against the platform and kill us. You know what the little signal was? <laughs> John, you'll enjoy this. As soon as the first person was to say anything like, tonight we're going to receive the offering. <laughs> that was their signal. But you know what happened? I didn't know anything. Of course, and my people didn't know anything about the signal. But the Spirit of God came to me in that time of intercessory prayer as my spirit left my body and I began to deal with these things. The Spirit of God spoke to my heart and said, for this entire crusade, don't you dare let one person on that committee get up and take an offering. So you see, they didn't get a chance to give their signal. They were dumbfounded. Confused. I felt like my body was wrung out in that day and a half. Felt like my whole spirit was wrung out. I 
I found myself praying not against the things, but I found myself in the spirit world coming against powers that were influencing and causing these things to come into being. I didn't pray against the Hindu priests because they were nothing. Who are the Hindu priests? Nothing. It was the forces that surrounded the Hindu priests. They were not in control of themselves. Something else was in control of them that caused them to act like they were acting and wanting to come against me and kill me. It wasn't them. It was something else. There was a man that God raised up many years ago. God used him mightily in North America, especially on the East Coast. His name was Charles Finney. Finney was a Congregationalist. He wasn't a Pentecostal that we could look at and say, oh, well, he belonged in the Pentecostal ranks. He was a Congregationalist. He was an attorney, very well known, was one to Christ, miraculous conversion. It's no trick to teach. A lot of people can teach. But you know why we're not turning out very many people that can cast out devils? You know why we're not turning out very many people that can heal the sick? You know why? Because our people are not under the teachers who have had the experience, whoever did it themselves. something you can talk all about the theory you want to of the power of God and what God can do but unless you have experience for yourself where you know that when you prayed the devil obeyed your voice this man before he would go, he became an evangelist, a teacher. Before he would go into his crusades, he would go into the woods and pray. He had an experience. You know what he did? He hired somebody to go in and lock himself in a room and pray for weeks and months before he ever got into that city. You know what that man would do? He would intercede in the spirit. He'd come against the spirits of that city. And it's God's intention that we take the new anointing and use it to turn our cities and our towns around for his honor. The, the trouble with the church today is we don't understand what we're going to go to here in the spirit world that the nations of the world can be in the hands and the control of the people of God. The devil has taken more people in your church by default. He doesn't win it because he's got the power. He wins it because you don't do anything. Takes our cities, our homes by default. He used to go off in the woods.
and he would intercede. You say, why did he go in the woods, Brother Sewell? Because he didn't want people to think he was crazy. He would intercede. He would travail. And when he did, his gushings would be so unutterable. He was concerned that people wouldn't understand him. If he ever got in a meeting like this and started to travail before God, you'd all look at him and say, He would tell the stories in his autobiography of how he would roll on the ground in the wood. He would tell the story. Now, I'm not trying to make a doctrine out of this. Rolling on the grounds or making funny noises. <laughs> Romans 8, 26. Listen. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us. How? With the King's English? With all your I's dotted and your T's crossed and your commas put in the nice place, brother, and all your theology and everything so nicey nice. It maketh intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. He said, I would feel my spirit leave my body. And he said, I felt like I would go into another world. And there I would wrestle. Not with the surface. Not with the surface. But he said, I found myself going beyond the surface and into another realm in the spirit. And there I wouldn't deal with the thing. But somehow down here in the spirit world, I would deal with what was causing this manifestation. And when I laid the to the root, this thing crumbled. Ah! I went on that platform the first night. There were 60,000 Hindus. First night. That crowd grew till my father is my eternal witness, the God that created the heavens and the earth. That entire field in a few nights was filled three football fields, shoulder to shoulder, chest to chest of people. Hear how quiet it is in here? That's how quiet it was on those grounds. You could hear a pin drop. Not one disturbance. Spirit of the Lord. Control every man. The first night when I gave the oracle and asked the Hindus, you have to see Brother Srila overseas to understand how 
we challenge these different forms of religion and these works of Satan. And I ask them to turn from Hinduism and to turn from every false God and to accept the only God. God knows I tell you the truth. I do not exaggerate. 90% of those people on that ground the first night and every night thereafter raised their hands. And I mean, they cried and they wept until I had to get an instrument, something and smack on the platform like this to get them from start to stop them from praising God so we could go on and begin to pray for the sick and do something else in the meeting after every call to receive Jesus. As I stood there and I was expecting the work of God, God was doing the work. I was nothing. I was just his little instrument. And I stood back there and I cried on that platform like a little baby. The Spirit of God said to me, Son, the sooner you realize what is happening here in India, the sooner you'll understand what I mean when I say my new anointing is coming. <laughs> and watching those sinners pray, I said, God, what do you mean? He said, son, the sooner you realize that you are not dealing with ideologies. You're not dealing with political forces. You're not dealing with things. The sooner you realize where your battleground is, the sooner my people will have the victory. There is a rule. If God is going to take you into the new anointing, you're going to have to realize that you are not in a natural conflict. It hasn't got anything to do with this natural world, brother. You are not in a natural conflict. And you are not engaged in natural things too long. We've been dealing with the surface. We've been dealing with the things. I'm gonna tell you something, brother. There's a power down here that's manipulating this thing, brother, and it's causing people up here on this level here and on this level in the natural world, brother, to use those things. It's guiding, it's directing, it's influencing it. It has only one purpose. The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The devil wants us to waste our energies. Now, I thank God, again, for everything that's being done to help people with abortions and all these other problems that we have today. But I want you to know something tonight. 
the answer is not in Washington, D.C. I think it's our job to stand up politically. I believe that with all of my heart, I believe it's the Christian's task to do that. To stand against those ungodly, atheistic influences. But I've got news for you. You can get all the petitions in the world you want to, brother. But you're not going to stop abortion. Now you listen to me. You can march down the street and you can scream and holler all you want to politically and legislatively about homosexuality. But you are not going to stop it. You can put on all the anti-alcoholic campaigns you want in the world. You aren't going to stop drunkenness by legislation. The answer is not in laws. Think you can stop prostitution? Go ahead, pass all the prostitution, anti-prostitution laws you want to in your city. Go on. You can't stop it. Why, Brother Shalom? Because you're not dealing with the cause. You're only dealing with the surface. That's not the answer. That's not the answer. That's not the answer. As long as you continue to deal with the surface and the temptation is strong, brother, to deal with the thing and think you can do something about the surface. But you can't. The sooner you realize this, the sooner you're going to have the victory. Amen. Jesus. The first room of spiritual warfare and battle is we've got to locate our enemy. You cannot fight an enemy that you have not located and that you have not marked. Told you the other night, brother, it takes spiritual energy. We're talking about a war. We're not talking about winning a battle. We're talking about winning a war. And that takes spiritual energy. If you continue, that's where the energy is required. That's where the spiritual penetration is required. That's where the spiritual concentration is required. If you continue, Promiscuousness. It's a spirit. You go into your cities, you can try to legislate all you want, but you can't stop. You can't stop the certain districts. Promiscuousness. It's a spirit. Remember, I told you if we are going to win. The war, we're going to have to learn how to conquer an enemy 
that's already defeated. Somebody said, what a terrible day we're living in. The only thing is, brother, you haven't known it's been going on all the time. That if we were to draw a circle and call this the purpose of why Jesus came into this world, that only this much would probably relate to the fact of him dying on the cross to forgive our sins. He came here for a tremendous purpose. And that was only part of the purpose. We're not a glee club. We've acted like it. We're not a social club, but we've acted like it. the salt of the earth. The whole world depends on us. The whole world depends on what happens to God's people. The whole world. The only sanity there is in this world is the fact that there's some Christians here that are walking around filled with the Holy Spirit. Take us out of the world and look out, brother. It's not worth that much. We're the only thing that holds it together. We're not dealing with things. Sin, rebellion, confusion, frustration, turmoil, lust, habits, dope, attitudes, spiritual weariness, <laughs> feeling in my bones. Something stirring for you. Kapola, Shandalaboka. Something is stirring for you, my God, my God, my God. It's stirring for your family. It's stirring for your home. It's stirring for your children. It's stirring for your mind. It's stirring for your attitude. It's stirring for your whole spiritual being. My God, stand upon your feet. Kapo shandalabatakabara. Go ahead, begin to speak to God in other tongues. Put your hands on your head right now. Satan, I charge you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the name that's above every name be bound over the minds, the spirits, the will, the control of the influence of these people in the name of Jesus. We bind you at the root cause. Be bound. Be bound. Be bound. 
somebody that feels the power, the presence of God, the power of the enemy being bound off of your life. I want you to just go ahead and give the Lord a mighty shout of praise the Lord. Don Mandel, I tell you, I feel the power, the presence of God. There is nothing like the anointing of God. There's nothing like the Word of God. What a message, what an impartation today. Hallelujah, and I know that each viewer, each part, I won't call you viewers, you're, you're not. You're participants. Amen. Each person that is active in this message, God is bringing home to you in your own life. As was said earlier, the problem is not the problem to direct, to locate that enemy. Dr. Strollo gave us some suggestions here of sin, spirit of rebellion, spirit of confusion, frustration, habits, dope, and spiritual weariness. God is at work in your life, dethroning these things and releasing you into the fullness of your calling in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. What a revelation that we need to go to the root cause of our problem. The devil is a liar. As long as he succeeds to hide the real reason of the circumstance we are facing, he's a winner. But what a revelation. I just want to go on my knees now and enter into a time of prayer and say, Satan, that problem, it's not really that problem, but I'm going to go deeper in the spiritual world. And I have received power to bind. And everything I bind when I'm on my knees, it's bind in heaven. Oh, hallelujah. We are ready to enter into a a new dimension, not only of saying we have victory, but experiencing the victory of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Father, I give you praise and I thank you for your servant, Dr. Morris Serrillo. Thank you for such a revelation, Father. Thank you that we need to understand that you ask us to locate our enemy, Father, and that we should not focus on the circumstances, but we must focus on the devil who is a liar and he is a defeated fool. And in the name of Jesus, whatever circumstance we face, whatever circumstance you face, we took authority in the name of Jesus and we declare the resurrection life of Jesus in your life in Jesus' mighty name. Ah, oh, hallelujah. Man. Thank hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's right. That's right. Listen, I want you to know something that when the prophet of God prays for the church of Jesus Christ, when a Mark Masson, a Don Mandel, a David Cirillo, a Teresa Cirillo, whoever you are on the other side of this podcast, whoever you are on the other side of this Facebook, on the other side of this YouTube, when you hear a prayer from the prophet of God that the power of the enemy be bound off of your mind. I want you to know something. Today, fear is being broken off of your life. Today is going to be the beginning of a new season for somebody. Today is gonna to be a day where you are going to learn how to draw a line on your past. You received the prayer of the servant of God. He prayed in the name of Jesus Christ, not in the name of Morris Cirillo. I want you to know something, devils tremble when they hear the name of Jesus Christ prayed by somebody that has that relationship, that connection with the power of that name, the living God, the name that's above every name. And Brother Cirillo prayed that that power be bound over your mind. He prayed it be bound over your spirit. I declare that habits, I declare that strongholds, things that have kept you from the perfect will of God, things that have kept you from the peace of God, from the purpose of God, those things are growing strangely dim and they are weakening over your life and the power of God is growing and God is arising and every enemy is being scattered and Brother Srillo prayed that the power of the enemy be broken over your will. I declare today things that have said you can't, I declare today you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. And then he prayed that over the control of the influence 
people in your life, if there are people that the enemy is trying to use to be an influence for evil in your life, we declare today that there is a shield, there is a hedge about you, and that God is the glory and the lifter of your head. And we thank you, Lord. We come into agreement with the prayer of Morris Cirillo. And we declare that every unlawful thing over your people, God is declared unlawful, oh God, over their minds, over their will, over the influence of even other people, oh God. And every lawful thing in your presence, God, the free flow of your Holy Spirit, your anointing, God, the power of a new beginning today, the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, the power of condemnation being broken. And Lord, we thank you for the voice of the intercessor today. Lord, we bless you today that the voice of the accuser is bound off of every life, off of every mind, off of every will, off of every family. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, yes. amen. amen and amen. I tell you what, I feel Jesus in this place. And we're so proud of you for staying connected. Today is day five. Tomorrow, a powerful, maybe the greatest secret, Mark, I know you love the message tomorrow. It's the power of our will. And it really is the greatest power that we have is the power of surrender. My God, you know, people are surrendering to so many different things. You're never gonna find power until we surrender to the will of God, till we surrender to the word of God. And so Brother Shrill is gonna take us somewhere tomorrow. You cannot miss it. But listen, it's not just enough for you not to miss it. Bring somebody with you. You know, Brother Cirillo said, God, give me the ability to pass on to somebody else. And you have that anointing and you have that desire. And I want to encourage you. I see how you do it on Facebook when you start to tag different ones that need to be a part of the message. When you begin to share the stream, when you take the podcast, you share it, you take the YouTube link, you share it, your comments, all of your uh, prayers, everything that you are doing to let the Lord know how you are blessed. I tell you what, it does not go unnoticed. Before we go off today, if you haven't done it yet, please make sure you get your copy of the new anointing. Listen, there are a lot of books about a lot of things, but I don't know another book that is written that you can find on Amazon, or anywhere in the earth, that will give you the experience that Brother Srolo shared with us today. Everything that you heard today was just the tip of the iceberg. Brother Srolo will take you into his hotel room in India and really bring you a depth of the experience and the impartation that he received that I believe will change your life. Receive a new anointing. Mark, isn't it great? God is giving us something new we've never had before. Amen. And you know, I want to say that this book, The New Anointing, is part of the School of Ministry. Yes. Because you are listening to the video, it goes quick. But when you open that book, then you can stop, you can open your Bible, you can meditate. Yeah. And I would really encourage you. Take advantage of Take advantage of that book. Yeah. Your life is gonna be changed. Yeah, I mean, Don, this is the message that's changed over five million lives, it's changed our lives. You know, we stand here and we've told you this before, we are participators just like you are. We are receivers just like you are. So I want to encourage you, take advantage. And then I love this, an incredible word from God, Jesus Christ, your great high priest. He ever lives to make intercession for you. When Jesus ascended from the earth after he was here for 50 days, he didn't just go on vacation, but he is seated at the right hand of the Father and he is having a conversation with his Father in heaven about you right now. And I want you to know there are two voices over your life. There is an accuser, but I want you to know there's a greater voice, Jesus Christ, your great. <laughs> what a great high priest, what a mighty God we serve. So Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your students. We thank you for your men, your women, your young people all over the world that are receiving this impartation. God, we declare that this ministry will never die because it's not the work 
of Morris Cirillo, but it's the work of the Holy Spirit of the living God. So Father, thank you for the deposit today. We receive it. We declare we will never be the same again in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen, amen and amen. amen. Well, we love you. We can't wait to see you next time for day six. On behalf of Mark and Don, this is Greg Moore reminding you that you are a part of God's end time plan. And God has not planned any defeats for you. And we'll see you next time for day six of the Morris Cirillo New Anointing School of Ministry. God bless you.